Hi, our dear students. In the rest of this uh, quarter, we will study the type of uh, or the genre of Gothic literature. What is meant by Gothic literature? What are the characteristics and the features of the Gothic literature? Also, we will study a short story about this uh, genre of uh, literature. First of all, I want you to have a look on these uh, photos. Which one of these that you feel gloomy and stressful? Is it the one in a yellow dress that holds uh, a bunch of flowers? Or the one in black and red? Or the one who holds the swords? I want you to try to guess which one related to the Gothic literature. Here in this photo, or these photos, which one of these photos refers to gothic or something gloomy and uh, stressful? The two smiling girls or the boy in that photo? Also here you will find mansions and a very, um, a very old house in a distant place. Which one of these photos refers to something gloomy and stressful? Here the girl in dark red. Do you feel... Uh, happy when you see her and cheerful or you feel yourself uh, stressful and uh, so depressed also the photo of the uh, the mansion and of the uh, dark place that uh, covered with snow which of these photos refers to something gloomy here the the cross the oldest one refers to the gloomy and a very stressful atmosphere. I want you just to think what do the Gothic images have in common from the image that we have just shown. Now let's discuss your answers or the thing or the stories or the photo story that you thought about. Here we will talk about the Gothic period. Gothic period from the music in the background you will feel that Gothic period is the period crosses from the late 18th century to the early 19th and mixes into the Romantic period with Gothic Romans. Gothic colors as what you have just seen in these or the, the previous photos like dark colors, shades of black create mystery and danger. Also the deep red, the woman in the deep red uh, dress that you saw also reveals injury, death, murder, sadness, or anger. Also, you will find the jewel to uh, tones in the cross that you saw that reflect that Renaissance may create the setting also of the Gothic literature selections. So the common features of the Gothic literature, you will find mysterious, dangerous, suspenseful, confusing, and horrifying. The setting of uh, the, uh, the Gothic uh, literature. It's like old church, cemetery, old castle, old mansion, old house, caves and forest. Also you will find ruins, shadowy and dark rooms. As uh, what you can see in these images. This woman in red dress and she uh, her look in the, into the ground feels uh, made makes you feel that she's sad also here in this photo it's a shadowy setting also this mansion you feel it's abandoned place and nobody lives in that place the atmosphere itself refers to fear you feel yourself frightened not feeling secured fear of unknown this is the most prominent characteristics of the gothic literature Fear of unknown. People fear of something that they don't know. It's a mysterious thing that they fear. Also, you feel yourself suspenseful and you have a threatening feeling makes you not to feel good. Also, isolation. Isolation also, we refer to it as romanticism. Romanticism, it's a type of literature uh, that refers to loneliness and uh, uh, sadness. So the Gothic literature, as what you can see from this photo, is uh, ominous. Ominous means something 
that makes you feel unstable or you feel yourself uh, in a very irritating mood. This like disturbing dreams, predictions, you predict something bad, foreshadowing of something that will happen like in Macbeth's story if you have read it before, visions and of course it's a gloomy visions and lurking doom, doom or curse. So curse, one of the uh, the prominent characteristics of this type of literature. In Gothic literature, you will find the metonymy. Metonymy means that the same word or phrase substituted for another with uh, which it's closely associated, like crown for reality, coronation. These are the uh, metonymy or the same word which is used in the same situation. A gloom or horror and uh, a gloom and horror are the 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 prominent characteristics of any uh, gothic literature story. You will find the atmosphere of the stories like you will find in A Rose for Emily, the story that you will study related to this type of literature. Wind, especially howling, doors granting on rusty hinge, footsteps approaching and you don't know who are the people who uh, walking in the background, um, gusts of wind, uh, characters trapped in a room and they don't know how to escape as in the modern movies like Hush and, uh, and the other one Scream that has uh, four parts. Ruins of buildings, buildings that uh, fe makes you feel distressful, thunder and lightning, of course, as you can see in the Arab uh, Arabic movies, that uh, there is thunder, uh, rains, heavy rains, and thunder that makes you feel distressful. Uh, we have also sighs, moans, howls, these sounds that you don't feel yourself good when you hear. These are the common vocabulary words for the Gothic literature, mystery, fear, terror or sorrow, surprise, haste, anger and largeness. You find like uh, gigantic uh, monsters, um, giant monsters, large and tremendous number of people and vast places. As we have just mentioned that uh, Gothic literature refers to or also known as Romanticism period. The romantic literature. Romantic here doesn't mean um, doesn't mean uh, relationship or love between characters. No, romanticism refers to um, lovers parted, loneliness, isolation. So the romantic period from the from the late 18th century to the late 19th. The romantic period flourished with authors including D Jane Austen, with the her very prominent uh, classic is Jane Eyre, William Blake, Samuel Coleridge and William Wordsworth, also the author that we will study, William Faulkner. So the characteristics of this uh, era is the it's a powerful and overwhelming love um, and also the uncertainty of uh, reciprocation of that love. They don't know if they will get each other or not. Uh, uh, unreturned love, uh, love from one side, tension between true love and the father's control, lovers parted as we said, the illicit love or lust threatens the virtuous one, rival lovers or uh, multiple suitors. These are the characteristics of uh, the romantic literature or the gothic literature. If we asked about the purpose of uh, gothic literature, you will find that gothic literature evokes terror versus horror in the reader. It tries to incite horror in your, in your inner self because of situations bordering reality and unreality. And it's often used to teach a message. The message itself or the story itself may lack a medieval setting but will develop an atmosphere of gloom and terror. What is the difference between the two? Let's differentiate between the two. Horror is an awful apprehension, described distinctly something grotesque and vague you didn't know about, it's unknown thing, 
so appealing unrealistic one depends on physical characteristics about terror in the on the other hand we have terror is a sickening realization it's suggestive of what will happen depends on readers imagination and the sense of uncertain uncertainty you don't know what is going to happen in the following uh, scene creates an um, intangible atmosphere of spiritual psychic dread you feel yourself uh, uh, frightened and not, uh, and unstable these are some of the uh, gothic conventions you will find murder death suicide ghosts demons gloomy settings as we mentioned before family secrets that can be revealed at the end of the story as what you will see in emily rose this part is very important because in a rose for emily you will find the family secrets affected the life of our protagonist in the story also dungeons like in presence like in the pit and the pendulum you find the protagonist of the story is uh, present in a very uh, weird dungeon curses of course the this is one of the gothic conventions torture most of the characters are tortured vampires spirits castles as we watch it in the photo that we uh, showed before toms and terror as we mentioned before we have uh, the metonymy of gloom and terror metonymy means the synonym that synonyms or the words that we use to express this type of uh, or this genre of literature which is the gothic literature metonymy is a subtype of uh, metaphor in which something like rain is used because most of the gothic literature or the gothic uh, stories you will find it rainy the atmosphere is uh, rainy you will find rainy atmosphere which is used to stand for something else like sorrow when you feel um, or for example when it starts to rain okay you feel something strange in your inner self so rain refers to sometimes to sorrow for example the film industry likes to use uh, metonymy so metonymy is very important expression be, you might be asked about in your exam what is meant by metonymy so metonymy is the synonym word of uh, anything related to this genre of uh, literature metonymy means the words which is used in a certain situation if you are happy you for example use the word awesome if you are sad you use the metonymy of uh, rain lightning thunder all of these are the metonymy of uh, sadness and of the gothic uh, literature note the following uh, metonymies that suggest mystery danger or the supernatural power we have like wind howling winds not only that wind okay howling winds also we have rain doors gra uh, grating on rusty hinges you feel the, you know or you hear the sound of the hinges of the door footsteps are approaching and you don't know who is coming towards the characters lights in abandoned rooms and also the 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 sound of the um of the uh clattering doors at uh, at once characters are trapped in room ruins of buildings as we mentioned before from the most prominent writers in this genre of uh, literature we find uh, Anna, Anna, uh, Anne Rice, Edgar Allan Poe, Joyce Carol Oates, uh, Stephen King and uh, Stephanie Mayer and also we have William Falconer the one that we will study his uh, short story A Rose for Emily. This is an example of abandoned house decay because uh, gothic literature refers to decaying setting another example of uh, the setting of gothic literature like notre dame westminster abbey and uh, harkness tower 
The first novel which is written in this uh, genre is The Castle of uh, Otranto. It's a novel by Horace Walpole, written in 1764 and considered the first example of Gothic uh, literature. The common motives of the, these stories or this uh, genre is revenge, decay, transformation, superstitions, grave robbing, mystery, nightmares, dreams, uh, necronomancy, and the first female also unreliable narrator because we don't know the credibility of the writer who wrote this story or is, uh, is this genre or story had already happened or it's just like a fig of imagination of the writer himself these are uh, uh, two of the most prominent novels which is written in this genre which is the gothic literature Frankenstein by Mary Shelley and Dracula by Bram Stoker William Falconer, the author that we will study one of his short stories, he didn't graduate from high school or college. He lived in a small town in the poorest state in the nation during the Great Depression age. Of course, all of us uh, studied the Great Depression age and we know the characteristics of the Great Depression age. So uh, I want you to have like uh, research about the characteristics of the Great Depression age. I need the research okay and you have to uh, to be ready on our discussion on uh, uh, on Tuesday about the characteristics of the Great Depression age to know what are the reasons that reflected on the author William Faulkner and made him to be a specialized author in this type of uh, genre in literature which is the gothic literature he faced financial ruins and still managed to write multiple novels set in the imaginary world of uh, Yankapofa country, the country that he lived in, uh, in Mississippi. That resulted in his becoming one of the most acclaimed writers of the 20th century and up to now people still uh, uh, amazed with his uh, stories and novels. Also, I want you to prepare a biography about William Falconer. This is uh, the timeline if, of his life, if you want to have a look on. Also, the interesting facts about uh, Falconer himself. This is a paragraph about his style of writing. He filled with sight sounds and he used different imaginary details and sensory details in his uh, writing. Now you will have like a short movie that tells you about the gothic literature or maybe introduce this genre to you. It was a dark and stormy night. We all love a good ghost story or horror film and these forms of entertainment share some characteristics with the gothic literature genre like ghosts ghouls, and headless spirits that may haunt the main characters. Gothic literature has a long history dating back to the 18th century. Credited as the first Gothic novel and considered one of the founding texts of the genre is Horace Walpole's The Castle of Otranto. Public so this is what we have just mentioned before. One of the most prominent and the first novel that's written in this genre is uh, the uh, the by Harris uh, Walpole's The Castle of Otranto. Manfred and the family curse that seems to arise when a stone helmet falls on his son and kills him on the day he is to be married. The events so one of the characters uh, characteristics that we mentioned in the uh, the explanation at the beginning the genre of gothic literature delete uh, deals with the uh, deals with the curses this is exactly what uh, uh, is written in the first no uh, novel about this genre which is the castle of uh, Otrin. to awaken a mysterious trend of curses and mishaps that send the characters in the novel into complete disarray other famous examples of gothic literature include the strange case of Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde in Dracula. Since the gothic novel has branched off into numerous subgenres, 
This lesson will look primarily at the origin of the Gothic in English literature and overview some of the classic texts that created the building blocks for what we know as Gothic today. The term Gothic novel broadly refers to stories that combine elements from horror and romanticism. The Gothic novel often deals with supernatural events, or events occurring in nature that cannot be easily explained or over which man has no control and it typically follows a plot of suspense and mystery. Here is a list of some common elements found in Gothic no novels. These are the elements of that uh, uh, which is common in the Gothic novel uh, genre. Gloomy, decaying setting. Haunted houses or castles with secret passages, trap doors, and other mysterious architecture. Supernatural beings or monsters. Ghosts, vampires, zombies, giants. Curses or prophecies, damsels in distress, heroes, romance, intense emotions. We'll look at it. So all of these are the characteristics or the common characteristics of the Gothic novels. Few characteristics, the supernatural madness and romance in more detail in the following paragraph, along with classic examples. The Gothic novel arose in part out of the fact that for the English, the late 18th and 19th centuries were a time of great discovery and exploration in the fields of science, religion, and industry. So here the question will be uh, to write about the emergence of this uh, genre of Gothic literature. Please take notes of the question that I mentioned in my videos because it will help you while studying for your exam. People both revered and questioned the existence of God or a higher power. Gothic novels allowed writers and readers to explore these ideas through the medium of storytelling. Ghosts. So from this video, you know that uh, the Gothic literature genre is uh, the genre that deals with the supernatural elements and, uh, and superstition also because it's the idea or the notion prevailed at that uh, time. From 18th century till the beginning of the 19th century, the notion of uh, superstition and supernatural power is the idea or the notion that prevailed at that time. So, what about the genre will be sent to you uh, on your SCL? Okay, and I will send you the PDF of the story Arose for Emily and you have to prepare this story. So this PDF will be sent to you. You will find here uh, uh, the autobiography of William Falconer. You can use this to, uh, to write a paragraph about William Falconer. And also you can uh, Google it or search the internet to find uh, about William Falconer. Falconer. Also, uh, what makes your skin crawl? So when you see a mouse or what is the thing that makes your skin crawl? A Rose for Emily is a story by William Falconer. I want you to identify or to read the story and answer the questions on the margin. Also, you will analyze the sequence of the story, the mood and its relationship with the, uh, the Gothic literature genre. Uh, also, you will prepare the vocabulary words that you will find, the, the vocabulary words that you will find on the margin. So, uh, you will find a word like the tableau, okay, the dramatic scene of picture. What is the tableau? And also, you will answer all the questions on the margin. This is the margin that I am talking about, the point of view of the story, uh, the um, uh, improviseness, what is meant by the... You will find, I think, seven or, uh, or nine words that you have to Google them and find the synonym of the word and the antonym of the word. Also, you will put them in a contextual sentence. What is meant by a contextual sentence? A sentence that uh, uh, includes the synonym and the antonym of the word. Okay, the synonym and the antonym of the word. For example, if we have a word like, um, it's a noun, no, it doesn't work with the, uh, I want an adjective, 
adjective all of them are nouns so try for example when i say when i say um he is a malicious person do you know what many of the students or the students in grade 10 or grade 9 uh, don't know the meaning of the word malicious so you have to put this word in a contextual sentence what does it mean he is a malicious person no one likes to be with him he is an evil uh, character so evil character refers to what uh, malicious one so you know the meaning of malicious from the context clue in the sentence if he is a benevolent character and he is a good one so this is the antonym of the word malicious so uh, people will like to be with his company so i want you to use this contextual sentence in all the vocabulary words that you study okay so uh, this is the the story itself and also i prepare the summary and the analysis of the characters i want you to read and be prepared on tuesday if you are not prepared don't attend the session so and um, this is the analysis of the story arose for emily this is the summary of the story the plot overview also the character list the character list of emily grayson homer baron judge judge stevens and the mr grayson himself and the top themes of the story that you will work on the tradition versus uh, versus t uh, change and also the power of death and if you try to, or you manage to enter any other um, themes you can do okay and also you will have uh, a study question on this uh, um, on this story arose for emily so i hope that you understood the idea of the gothic literature and you uh, you try to guess what comes to your mind when you hear the word gothic from the photos that i showed to you for example these are satanic or uh, and this one gothic stories and this girl that uh, who looks to the unknown these are the gothic literature and the gothic uh, genre thank you all and i hope that you understood the lesson and uh, be prepared for the session and don't come without preparation because you will not be uh, uh, ready for if you are not ready to the session you will not understand anything and the most important thing is to prepare before doing anything and you are senior students as uh, as you know all of you so you have to start to learn how to study for your future and for the university okay good luck all of you